So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to convert one of these cheap drills into a usable motor that could be used in robotics projects, which is cheap and has a gearbox to reduce the speed and increase the torque of the motor. So in order to perform this modification, you need several things. First, you need a cordless drill. This particular model, which I have right here, is a cordless drill and flashlight kit. You do not need this specific kit, but it is often the same price from Harbor Freight Tools as just the drill by itself. So that is why I chose to get the cordless drill and flashlight kit. So what you want to do is just simply open the box and take out the drill. This is what we're going to get our motor from, but you also need to get the battery too, and that will help make what you're doing easier. So for this modification, the only tool which you really need is a screwdriver, but I will be using a vise later to help take out the chuck. And aside from the drill, in order to modify the motor, you need uh, some grub screws. These are 10 by 32 times 1 fourth uh, grub screws. Basically, I think what it means is that it is size number 10, 32 threads per inch. So that tells you how coarse the thread is. And it is a quarter inch long. The most important is this number 10. This tells you the size of the screw and that it will fit snugly in the hole. You may use up to 8 or as low as 2 grub screws, but I have, have elected here to use 4. So first thing we're going to do while our drill is assembled, we are going to take out this chuck to expose the bare shaft of the motor, and that looks something like this. Inside of the drill, you can see there's a screw right here. This screw is a left-hand threaded screw, which basically means righty, loosey, lefty, tidy. And this screw is fit very, very snugly in the center of this motor shaft. So in order to loosen it, we have to get our screwdriver and take it out. You can't just unscrew it very easily. You see it's not budging. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, to the vise and try to get it out that way. So what we want to do now that we are at the vise is to get our screwdriver and clamp it into the vise. This will help us make sure that when we get our drill and try to take out the chuck that we can force the drill strongly onto the screwdriver and make the drill unscrew the chuck screw. And you want to set the drill onto reverse and that will help us unscrew the screw. So what you want to do is place the drill firmly onto the screwdriver and use force to put it on. So off camera I actually had a little change of plans. Instead of unscrewing the screw to the chuck. I actually tried that and then it stripped the screw and then I didn't know what to do. So I was confused for a while and then I just decided to drill out that screw. And where is that screw? It's somewhere on this desk. Maybe I should clean it. But basically what happened is I drilled out that screw and and we now have the chuck off of the drill. 
Some of you may say, oh, but wait, how are you going to mount anything to this drill motor without that screw? You need that screw to mount anything to the drill motor. Well, I actually always, whenever I use these kind of drills, I never actually uh, mount anything with that screw. So it's not really necessary. Uh, of course, if you wanted it to be there, then... Uh, then you would need that, but I do not need that. So basically we have our drill and the screw is out of the drill. Now we can start working on it more. Now it's time to get to the rest of this and actually taking out the body of the drill and also securing down the clutch. So to do that, we are just going to take out the battery and unscrew all of these screws and then unscrew these screws and then we should get to the motor of the drill. So now that we have taken apart the drill, we can see the internals of how it works. These are the contacts for the battery. The wires go up to the speed controller with this trigger and this directional control. Here's an LED and here is the actual motor. This is the body of the motor. It is an 18 volt motor and this is the gearbox. And after the gearbox is this clutch part, which we are going to take off. But first, let's take the motor out of the casing completely. So you could probably use this drill motor like this. But the problem is that the clutch is still here. And that controls how much torque. And this controls how much torque, which will be put into the output shaft of the motor. But we're using this for a, a robotics project. I want it to have all the torque all the time. So we are going to take off this stuff and block it off with these grub screws. One thing to know, you might want to get a magnet because there are a bunch of ball bearings in here and they will spill out unless you use the magnet to pick them up. So now we have this motor and it looks just like this other motor which I did earlier except of course it doesn't have the screw but one major thing we still haven't done so we gotta put the grub screws in otherwise this shaft will just turn freely and I don't really want that to happen so let's get out the grub screws I could tap these, but I'm just going to screw them in. And you can see once I screwed it in, it's still spins freely, so we have to screw the entire thing. You can see how the screw screws in just below the plastic. 
and that's what you want because it locks it in place. You could probably just use this one screw and it might work, but I'm going to put in all four, of course, equally spaced apart, so I put one here. There's going to be one here, here, and here. Now we're finished. We have this drill motor and it is ready to work in a robotics project. Let's just try it out while all this is still connected. Obviously you would cut off the wires right here or maybe even desolder them so you can just have access to the motor. But for right now it does indeed work. So some of you may now be asking Oh, since we don't have this bolt, how are we going to mount anything to this motor? Well, the answer to that is a simple 3 8 inch nut. And this isn't just any normal nut. It's actually threaded to this threading right here of 24 threads per inch. Uh, you can find that tap in any tap and die set. They always have them with those. But basically what I can do is now screw onto here and I could make a plate and that could be threaded onto the shaft and I could use this nut to tighten it down. And that's actually what I have done on my robot.